And I'm here with Scott Williams from Zentronics. He's been on the Amp Hour and in a previous episode, so I'll link those in if you haven't seen it. Um, and he's from Melbourne, guys, so we won't hold that against him. Um, and he's going to show us this um, rather interesting product for all my female viewers out there might be interested in this. Tell us about this, and we'll, yes, we will do a teardown. Yeah, in a sec, absolutely. So. This is this is the Scarlet Ray. So this product, the female founder came to us. She suffers from endometriosis, so effectively horrible cramping, pains, uh, a lot of um, issues with, I guess, uh, period pains and menstrual pains. Now, in terms of how do you solve that, right? That's a problem you have. How do you solve that? The typical go-to solutions for a lot of females is hot water bottles, disposable heat strap, uh, heat strips, uh, a few other solutions like that. Uh, none of those for her and her personal experience, they were suitable, not fit for purpose. On the market, there's a few modern uh, devices that are effectively portable heat packs. Some of them are, you know, you might have to have it plugged into the wall, so you're tethered to the wall. Oh, yeah, Some of them that. are big and bulky, and they, they heat up, but they have a big strap that wraps around you. Some of them are kind of overkill. They have a massaging mechanism in them as well, or a TEMS machine. They're all basically, again, kind of over-engineered or just not good, not, not you high don't, quality. You don't want a jack of all trades, masters of none. Exactly right, exactly right. So her vision for the product was a solution that just solved one problem, and that was heat. That was all we want is heat. We so this be, just heats up? That's exactly right. So it's effectively a portable heater. So we turn it on, press and hold this button. Oh, lead uh, comes actually, through the uh, silicon cover there. Exactly. Yep, nice. This actually has haptics. I can't show you, but when I'm oh, pushing okay. the button, it's actually yep. vibrating like your uh, phone does. Oh, okay, does. right. Yep. Oh, so you don't have to so see. So you don't have to, I can have you it here. You don't have to, yeah, and, and you can just press it. Actually. You know what, what exactly mode it's in. It vibrates different modes. To, exactly yep, right. right. Okay. So you can see the lights. There's three heat modes. So super simple, right? You can't you can't go wrong with using User interface, easy. Exactly. So the max heat setting is uh, up to 50 degrees. So there's various IEC safety standards that the product meets, and 50 degrees is the maximum any Otherwise heater product. Otherwise, it burns you. Exactly yes. right. Can can intentionally be. For it's the just user. like your home hot water. You've got to install the uh, the valve that automatically. Exactly right. Even temper even, temper valve. Even products that aren't intentional heaters. That's also their maximum temperature on the outside. Uh, so her vision was a product that was slim, sleek, portable, hot easy to use and this is where we came to this is cool. the end result so this was two years of hard work you can see all of the um, regulatory markings and safety uh, yep. safety standards that we've taken it through yep. uh, it, it sold in uh, the Europe UK Australia and New Zealand so uh, quite a sort so of it's only market. for those markets only for those markets right the US uh, quite interestingly <clears throat> needs to be UL rated Oh, now, anyone UL. who knows about UL, yes. yes. Anyone who knows about UL certification knows that even this was a complex project. UL makes it a whole lot more complicated. Yes. All right. Uh, so th that's a separate step again. Exactly right. But look, this 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 project's been fantastic to be a part of. Uh, they've they've sold I think a thousand in the first month uh, of the launch. If you check out the reviews on their website, uh, you'll see about 75 star reviews no other reviews nice. it's it's changing people's lives they love the product everything she hoped for is now coming true which is fantastic all right so this is a silicon so you guys uh designed and built the entire so what so what we did is we did the electronics inside yep. a company here you can see uh right. trike oh, okay trike they're a, a, a design firm based in um based here in melbourne they also did the design for oh this yes one we from saw last that last year. time yep. yeah, yeah so they did the industrial time. design for yep. this one yeah, very cool. so we worked again with them on this project oh, gotcha. so they, yeah because you still the, don't you don't still have an no, exactly. industrial design industrial in house design, exactly. you were talking about that last time maybe but uh no no last time we talked i said again we'll steer clear of that oh, more systems there. engineering and broader engineering i think um so again doing early focus groups and user studies uh, to work out the shape they should go for doing different prototype colors and sizes even the silicon this has a specific finish of silicon to get that smooth feel. It's not actually just normal silicon. Does it have to be a specific type of silicon right, for non-allergic kind food of... Food grade, right. Oh, That's right, exactly food, right. Grade, so, food, yeah. food grade silicon. Okay. Um, so again, you obviously see various other things that are subtle, like the user manual. So we help design and develop uh, the, the content of that as a part of the safety standards. 
And look, it's been a great success so far. Uh, and great, can we do a teardown? Yeah, so I mean, Let's, obviously, it's, it's on the market. The, anyone... Because these things are actually sealed in two parts, glued. Exactly. So, right. and I can feel that getting warm. Trust me, this is feeler vision. So, if you <laughs> if you have your hand up to the screen, you'll be able to feel the heat coming out of that. So, here we here we go. So this is what looks right. like on the on the inside of yep. the unit. So exactly as you would expect, yep. you rip it open and there's a, a flex heater. Yep. Uh, and now this this was very novel to design, right? And with the flex heater, <clears throat> if you have a really thin trace, it gets warmer with less current. Yes, it does. But it also has higher resistance. It does. And yes. This is a consumer product. You can't design in complex power electronics drivers and things. We had to come up with something simple, neat, something that would spread the heat evenly. Uh, even the, the glue between the flex yep. and the silicon, yep. nothing sticks to silicon. That's a little known fact. That's Quite why it, yes. it's made of silicon, is it's yep. easy to clean. Yep. So good luck trying to find something that can glue this to a silicon. That was a challenge in and of itself. Got it. Did you have to thermally model this, or you just did a trial and error trial kind and of error. thing? Trial, trial and error. There, I'm what, sure what, you could. What, what, There's what probably specialised software, right? What, what, are they, uh, what does that guy say? My favourite simulation tool is solder. Is solder. Uh, yes, yeah. right. Yep. <laughs> My favourite... Programming language is solder. Programming language is Programming solder. Language exactly. is solder. Yep. Uh, so you can see the battery underneath yep. this cage nice. here. So that's a standard requirement for the IEC standards. So yep. it's actually protected mechanically. Right. So you yeah. can't put a raw, ba like a no. battery, just directly no. against the skin. No, exactly. Right. Okay. Oh, not so much the skin. More just, right. it's like, more just against the, the okay. outside of the product. Right. Uh, and then obviously the button, the LEDs, yep. various other parts for the control, the battery charging, everything you would expect in an electronic product. Yep. There's the main board down in. What uh, processor did you use? So we actually used an uh, NRF52. Okay. And that's actually future proofed oh, it for app. blue. It's future proofed it for that. Right. So not at the moment, but exactly you could right. future proof it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Because the thing with the NRF52s, which is great, uh, little known fact, they're so cheap now that you can kind of just use an NRF instead of an STM or instead of an NXP or instead of a microchip. It's still like a dollar, two dollars, even if you don't use the Bluetooth. Uh, doesn't mean you should standardize on it. They obviously have their own trade-offs and limitations. But if you're even remotely thinking about connectivity, same with an ESP32 and Wi-Fi, right? If you're even remotely thinking about it, it's worth just going with that. Uh, Got it. And so, what's the retail price of this? So the retail price is uh, one, uh, 129 okay, Australian that's dollars. that's way cheaper than I thought it would be. I mean, wow, look, it's okay. like I said, it's got five hours of battery yeah. life, right? It's a premium product. USB-C recharging. Uh, it's designed to be something modern in a person's life, in a modern woman's life, and a companion. Uh, same as your phone, right? Uh, and the value it brings, I think it's, it sells itself. Oh yeah, totally. Now you were saying that uh, you did not do this as a uh, rigid flex hybrid, which mm. is which is uh, well, we've got an example over here, right? This is your new. That is a rigid flex hybrid, yes. where the flex is like embedded. done as an inner layer it's actually embedded or it's uh, done as a top layer or a bottom layer right yes yeah yeah so it's actually embedded in there like that um that's rigid flex and you said the reason you didn't go with that is because it's like a dollar more expensive yeah right so so even having two separate a flex and a rigid uh in a lot of cases it's still more affordable than doing a rigid flex design rigid flex just steps it up such a higher degree what that means is if you're deciding to do a rigid flex in your design, you need to make sure you have a really strong justification for it. See, that's actually separate, yes. So that's just glued on the bottom like that. Mm. So yeah, yeah, so that is a cheaper solution, um, exactly. but works just the same. Exactly, so with rigid flex, the reason you might want to use rigid flex in for this application it's to actually get the sensors pointed in the right oh, direction. Oh, okay, yes, because yeah. these these are sensors. This is an acoustic, I think we did this last year, this is an acoustic. Direction of audio, yeah. Yeah, so these are little microphones, and then these just flip up like that, so you just bend them up. So yeah, rigid flex. And um, the, the, the thing is, uh, Alternatively, it can be related to like inside camera devices. Rigid yes. flexes are very common in your oh, DSLR cameras. Oh, I've done teardowns of the cameras. It's, and... it's, you literally have to use rigid yes. flex. It's not possible to have so many connections, so much shielding, yep. controlled impedance, right? Yep. A normal flex 
FFC even, yep. you can't have control <laughs> no. impedance on this. You've just got tracks going over it. Some companies are now selling ones with EMI shielding. EMI shielding is different to controlled impedance again. So uh, yeah, so again, you've got case by case basis, but a lot of times rigid flex, it can't just be about the look and the convenience. It's got to be a real specific reason. Otherwise, the, jo the cost is too hard to justify. Got it. Uh, and great. yeah, so that is, that is very cool. And I noticed that, um, of course, because um, you don't want it to go over 50 degrees C, so you've got a thermal cutout there. You can see that's glued down. Is, that, mm. is, is there a cutout slot in the there board is, there? The right, yeah, mm. right, right. So there's a cutout slot in the board there for that little uh, thermal um, switch. And so you, you can, can see that that's just in series. Exactly. Like there's, that. there's so yeah. much that's been designed into this to just not compromise quality and not compromise safety. Yep. That was That's a huge part of this when we're working with a local brand here in Melbourne. We don't want to cut corners. Yep. We want to make sure even, you know, for example, the battery charger, it's not just some backdoor component we found. It's Texas Instruments. Like oh, it's a premium nice. component, yes. right? In terms of power electronics, you can't go wrong. Exactly. All of the, um, you know, if the battery is getting too hot, it'll charge at a slower rate according to the JDEC standards and stuff. It's yep. it it's all comes out of the box. So no compromise there. And look, there's I think there's nearly two thousand of these out in the field. It's been nice. three months yep. and there's been no quality issues whatso whatsoever. Yeah. That is very cool. That's a very cool example of where somebody with an idea um, like this can come to a design consultancy like mm. like yourself and go, please. Um, you know, it's not particularly cheap. There's a lot, no, of, money, no. money, and, and lot of money in the development And a of lot of thing. defining the so, problem. Yes. Defining like this one, the question was how hot can we go? Or yeah, how hot yeah, should we go? Exactly. The amount of time we spent just on that before yep. starting to design anything at all, that was, you know, a quarter of the project. It's just working in the problem space, we call it. So that was a two-year project from start to first production. Yep. Yep, that doesn't surprise exactly right. me at all. And, and you could say <laughs> another year, just the client... Uh, ruminating the idea and, yes. and you know exploring other ways of getting it done and working with China and all these other yep. options right so Got it. Uh, yeah fantastic result for everyone in the end that is great that's yeah fantastic example of a very simple product trust me uh, you don't do not want a jack of all trades masters of none product you want a product that just solves one problem and solves it well that's, that's always it. way better than a Swiss Army knife solution. <laughs> so yeah, the ones that have vibration built in and, and massage in and all that, no, no. It's just, no. you get bulky because of that, yeah, but then yeah. the problem then is we want something slim. Yep. Right? And um, tell us about how, why you've done these little um, fingers, embedded these mm. little fingers into here. Yeah, so it's pretty pretty obvious, right? If, yep. you, if you don't have these, and this is sitting over here glued, yep. people can pinch and squeeze and break either the electronics or, or, or the heater yep. itself, right? Um, again, even the spacing of these and the thickness of it, that's something that you can't really um, guess, nor can you simulate. You just genuinely have to iterate and test. And, Got it. Um, so yeah, quite a quite an amazing uh, amazing project to be a part of that one. That is really cool. Thank you very much, Scott. That is awesome. And check out Zentronics. I'll link down below. Thanks. Catch you next time.